Hey folks, this is Ard Wolf. Welcome back. This is Turn 6, Episode 6, representing March and April of 1915 in Win Eagle's Fight. So uh, let's get right to it. We are going to first roll on the random events table, which we first had to do last turn, Turn 5. This is a two-die roll. Let's make sure you can see the dice here. And we have a six, which, looking at is Event E, Italians launch a Sanzo offensive against the Austro-Hungarians. Now, we actually ruled this last time. Um, however, um, uh, it has no effect if it's rolled on game turn five, but if it's rolled on game turn six or later, reduce the turns Austro-Hungarian replacements um, for the turn. Now, for this turn, Austria-Hungary would normally receive two replacements, uh, we follow the same procedure that the Germans uh, follow if they uh, roll event C, and that basically means that uh, replacements are halved. So Austria-Hungary will have three replacements total. They were supposed to get two, they will actually only get one. So I'm just going to actually track that um, right now. The Russians get five replacements, and the Germans, believe it or not, get two replacements this turn. Uh, we are going to do the new units and withdrawals phase next, and that is going to start with the Russians, so let's get to that. Technically, we do reinforcements first, but the Russians get no reinforcements this turn, but Stavka does become available to them. So we'll keep that on the turn record track for now, uh, and we will look at their replacements. And they have no mandatory withdrawals. So looking at the units they have available, and they have five points and none held over from previous turns. We've got five, six, four, six, seven, four, 236 cav, 236 cav, and there we go. So what can we do with five points? So this is a two-step unit. The rest of them are one-step units. So I say I'm going to pull this one back with, uh, for, for two, and then take, I was going to say I'll take these three for uh, the remaining three points. However, I think I'm actually going to take one of these and then take the two cav. Uh, because the Germans have been trying some uh, some pretty aggressive maneuvering up north, and I want to have a mobile force um, capable of a cutting off any uh, crazy German uh, flanking maneuvers, and b um, preventing uh, uh, maybe uh, exploiting some uh, some holes in uh, in the German lines. So uh, these two will go back into the pile. And these four will come on as a reinforcement. So let's take a look at that. As usual, the Russian reinforcements have to come in in cities in Russia. Uh, we will take this guy and put him in Minsk. Uh, we will take this guy and also put him in Minsk. Uh, pretty much everything that the Russians have this time, we'll put the two cav in Smolensk, uh, is staying up north this time. Uh, the, the north is looking very shabby. And conversely, I feel like I have more than enough meat on the Austro-Hungarian border to finish off Austria-Hungary. So uh, we'll see how that plays out in the movement phase because I haven't actually sat down and added up factors yet. So let us move on to the Central Powers reinforcements phase. Okay, so let's deal with the Germans first. Um, these are the German reinforcements and they could sure use them. Uh, we have another active core. Let's put that here. Let's put this here. Let's put this here. We want to put them on rail lines so that we can strategic move them. And that's pretty much the extent of the German reinforcements. However, we do have some, we do have two replacements for Germany this turn, and we can use them. So let's zoom over there and take a look at that. Okay, so we have two German active cores that have taken step losses. So those are where we want to put our replacements. And they're one step apiece. And they're right here. So we'll flip those back over and put them back in as full strength. German active cores. And so far we have drawn random events that are not at all bad for the Central Powers. Uh, it seems, I haven't really studied the random events to be honest, but it, it seems to me like they are more often unfavorable to the Central Powers player. So uh, again, we have no uh, mandatory withdrawals, and the Central Powers have no conversions this turn, and I, I believe they don't for the remainder of the game. I think the last one of those comes out on like turn four. So uh, we are done with the new units and withdrawals phase, so let us go to strategic movement, starting with the Russians. 
Okay, first of all, you may notice that I've noted on the map, because I screwed this up last turn, uh, cities in Russia actually get a minus two uh, to terrain effect uh, modifiers to combat when Russian units are defending in them. We forgot to do that in Kovno. Uh, in fact, I think I knew that, but uh, but missed it completely. So I don't think we can go back and fix that, because I don't remember what the rules were, and I haven't gone through the video yet. So uh, let's just move on. In the meantime, we need to reinforce what's going on up here. The Russian rail strategic movement capacity in 1915 is four units. Um, so we're going to take one, two, three. Ooh, maybe I don't want to do that. So we have a guy up here who's off map down in Berdichev. We're going to take him and we're going to put him up in Riga. Um, we're going to take this guy and put him up in Kronstadt. And technically, I can get here too. But we so that's two. We're going to take the two cav and move them here. Or do we want to put them here? I think we put them. Yeah, they're really, really vulnerable there. To be completely honest about it, uh, we'll put them in Pskov, and that's four. So that's the entire Russian strategic movement phase. Okay, so for German strategic movement, I'm not going to show these because uh, they're, I just placed them and they're on the west map edge. I'm going to take two, five, six, four units, and my rail capacity is six, and rail them up to Kovno. I actually want these lesser units up here instead of down um, with the Austrians. Um, I also have two more five, six, fours. And I'm going to send one of those up here to Olita. Let's drop that there. And then I have, that was three. I have two more units, and I have, I can actually um, strategic move one more unit, and I might. Um, so what I would really like to do with these two units is to do something to help support the Austro-Hungarians. Um, however, they're really not going to be able to do that this turn, just because of the way that the lines are set up. Um, so I think that what I am going to do, looking at my units here, in Ivanograd. I have three, so I can't stack anything else there. I think we're going to have to use conventional movement for that and take these other two units and send them up to uh, Russia. So we have a town right here that we can use. We'll put them there. Uh, we do have another active core here as well, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the Germans. Um, let's see what uh, the Austro-Hungarians are going to do, if anything. I can't really see much to do with Austria-Hungary regarding strategic movement. We do have this one unit in Budapest, which I was thinking about moving out and putting them up in this mountain pass, but to be honest about it, um, there's uh, 11 to uh, 12 defense factors in there already. Um, I'd really like to have something in Budapest so the Russian army just doesn't walk in um, should something weird happen. Uh, we also have an Austrian unit up by Vienna. Um, I think that was in Brun, and somehow it got moved out. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I'm going to put it in Brun. Um, so that's it for Austria-Hungary. So uh, now we will roll into the, uh, the Russian player turn and their regular movement phase. In order to stand a reasonable chance of taking Krakow this turn, the Russians are going to have to encircle it and bring some more guys down from up here. So I'm going to move these guys as a stack. Um, if I can pick them up. One, two, three, four. Oop, wait a minute, we can't do that. These guys only got three movement factors. I gotta watch out for that, I didn't realize that. Well, that's what we're doing. This guy will move one, two, three. This guy will move one, two, three. And this guy will stay where he is. Uh, this guy down here will move one, two, three. Get this guy in on the action. One, two, three. Make sure there's no terrain in here. There isn't. Is that three units there? It's two. 
with this guy in. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We can pull this guy up here, although that leaves this dangerously exposed with the German force looming up here. Um, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. Germans could move in one, two, three, four, and cut that rail line. But I could still draw supply through here because there's no zones to control it here. So that's as much as the Germans could do this turn. So I think for now, I am okay with that. So let's relocate up to the Battle for the Carpathian Passes a uh, little bit to the east, and we'll take a look at what the Russians are doing up there. Once again, we have to bring as much pressure to bear on this hex as we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to move these guys one at a time. That's going to be one, well, two, two movement factors. That's going to be two movement factors. And let's see what we can do here. That's going to be two. That's going to be two. That's going to be two, four. So let's move this guy to four, two, four. We are going to place Stavka, by the way, and that's going to go here. And then this unit can move two. This unit can move. Well, hold on, because I don't think I have to do that. This unit can go one. This unit can go two, four, two, four. And that brings that uh, as much force to bear on that mountain pass as I can bring in both cases. Uh, in, in This is really um, a lot rides on this turn for the Russians. If the Russians... Uh, run into an Austro-Hungarian wall again like they did last turn, uh, then I think they are deeply, deeply hosed. Um, so let's go up to the northern area versus uh, Germany and see what they have to do up there. Hopefully I have the camera positioned in a completely non-crappy way. Uh, I'm going to move a guy that's in the middle of the Pripet Marshes, another two hexes. There's not much more I can do with him except move him closer to where there's actual action. Uh, that's this guy right here. Um, I feel like we have to form something of a defensive line here. Now, on the one hand, uh, I would like to defend Vilna. Uh, is there a fortress in Vilna? There is not. Um, there's pretty good defense right there. But I'm going to see what I can do to put a defensive line together here. Because this, this, is, this is bad news. Um, so we're going to move this guy, one, two, we'll move this guards core, one, we'll take this, one, two, three, and put it there, we're going to keep these two in Vilna, move these guys out, one, two, three, four, and let's make sure terrain on that, that's it's a city. Cities just cost one. Okay, and then we've got these guys who are currently not really of any use at all. Um, we, what's the marsh? Marsh is minus one. It makes it kind of attractive. Move these guys one, two, three. Uh, we're gonna keep this six, seven, four up in Riga. And we're going to put this cavalry. I don't believe there's that there's any... Well, no. There's an attack I can make here against this unit, and it would be, it would be sensible for me to do that. Um, I wouldn't have such bad odds on it either. Um, I'd like to have the cavalry be a little bit closer. So let's put them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 them right behind uh, Dvinsk so that they can react and I don't think I think they're fairly secure there um, 
Okay. So that is it. Uh, since we this is where we have the camera already, I might as well do the combat. Uh, I'm going to do one attack, and it's going to be on that hex. It has five defense factors, and we have five, six for 11. This makes 14. It is 14 to 5. Ugh. I should have probably calculated this out before doing all the movement. I guess I could move another unit out of here in an attempt to blow a hole in that line. 14 to 5 is 2 to 1. It would be 0 for a forest. Uh, two to one is fairly lousy, and I really don't want to pull anybody else out of uh, Vilna. So I think I'm going to pass on that attack, and we are going to go uh, back down to our our two our three combats in Austria Hungary and see what happens down there. I had a beautiful, nice in focus, close shot lined up, and I couldn't uh, couldn't do anything about, uh, with it because I couldn't fit the glass under the camera. So let's see what we have here. I want to see there's 20 factors here still. Let's look at that and make sure. That's 7, 7, and 4. That's 18. That's still 20 factors. Plus they're in a city, which is minus 1. Plus there's a fortress, which is another minus 1. Stavka does not, whoops, Stavka does not apply to this particular attack. Now we have to figure out exactly what we had here because these guys are not double strength units. So we had 7, 7, Four. Okay, that's what we had. Let's use the tweezers because that's what they're for. So that's 20 factors. Now we have quite a bit opposing them too. And again, the concentric attack does not apply to fortresses. So we have six factors there, plus 10 is 16. We have Another 15 is 31. We have uh, 31 plus 6 is 37. 40, 45, 55. So that is not a 3 to 1. It's a 2 to 1 attack down 2, which is not great, um, but it, it really is the best that can be done here. Uh, so let's see what we get. That is a 2 on the 2 to 1, which is one step for the attacker and none for the defender. So we're going to lose this guy right here. I might have been able to squeeze more out of that um, if it wasn't for the fact that the weakened infantry divisions are uh, uh, have less movement. So let's uh, let's move to the east and uh, check out the battle for the Carpathian Passes. Bearing in mind that Stavka is in this hex right here. Let's see what we have in this pass. This is the important one here. We have 7 and 4 is 11. We have 17 factors in the defense. You know what? Since I'm writing these down anyway, We'll just note that so I don't have to add it up again at the end. So we have 6 here, plus we have 5 for 11. 16 and 3 is 19. This is not going to be great either. 19, 25, 31, 36. So we have 36 to 17. Wow! That is barely two to one. So it's two to one. Um, we are in a mountain pass. There's no fortress here or anything like that. But we're in a mountain pass which is worth minus two. But Stavka is worth plus one. So we are at a net. Can we see that? Try and get it where we can see it. We are at a net minus one on this two to one attack. Whew, okay. On a two to one um, for five, a uh, total of five with the uh, with the modifier. Uh, the attacker loses one step, the defender loses two. Okay, so this hurts the Austro-Hungarians rather badly. So we are going to lose, the step we're going to lose is going to be this half, uh, this re already reduced guy, so let's get rid of him. Okay, and the Austro-Hungarians, let's see what they have here. 
they are going to lose, they have to lose two steps here. So the steps they are going to have to lose is this already weakened replacement uh, unit and then this 564, which puts them there. However, that was tough, uh, and that's something that the Russians wanted to happen last turn, um, because now the Austro-Hungarians still hold that hex, and they can reinforce it again against the uh, the Russians. So the Russian uh, attempt to take Austria-Hungary by April of 1915 has failed, um, and the Russians do not have anything to do. Uh, attrition phase, uh, we have Russian supply points all over the place, uh, just checking this guy down here. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. That's fine. Uh, all Russian units are in supply with no problem. That therefore ends the Russian combat phase. So there's not a ton that the Austro Hungarians can do. However, they can optimize defenses on the locations that they do hold. So they're going to relieve these clowns here and put them here. And then move that unit there. They're, these guys are still on the front line, so it's really, it's really not much of a break. Uh, but these are actually pretty good units. Um, they, they're just garbage if you have to replace them. Now, up here in the Carpathian Passes, what do we have that we can put in there? Not much. However, it's better than nothing. Ah, you know what? Hold on a second. So we can go... One, two, three. One, two, three. Aha, take that, Ruskies. However, um, we don't want to get surrounded here because there's no fortress there. So we, we need to hold this. So we've got to put something there. We're going to put one, two, three. So we've got eight factors in defense there still. And the Russians didn't even... Uh, should I have attacked that? Here in the central part of the theater, the, the Germans do have some things they want to do. So we're going to, first of all, we'll leave these guys here for now. We have that at, at its stacking capacity. Uh, this unit is going to go one, two, three, and go into Lublin and take control of it for the central powers. So we'll remove the Russian control marker there. Uh, that's very significant. Now what do we have here in uh, Ivangorod? Uh, pretty good units. So what we'll do is we'll take these, we'll leave this 454 in Avangarad, and we'll take these two, the, five, the two 564s, and we will go one, two, three, and we are going to hit Brest-Litovsk. We're going to keep that where it is. Uh, let's reposition the camera because we need to, uh, we need to uh, move uh, our units against the main body of the Russian army. Okay, yes, I did just remove Oberos just now. So we're first of all going to move this active core right here because uh, we're going to pound the Russians here. This guy here. Use the tweezers. Okay. We're going to pound this guy right here and then we're going to hit the city of Vilna. So let's see what how we can maximize this. We have this 564 unit, this 564 unit, this 454 unit. Uh, we're going to march this guy back one, two, three to this hex. And we're going to march this guy up one, two, three to this hex. This guy will go one, two, three. And then these guys. And we're going to have a number of attacks happening here. Offhand, the attacks I would like to look at are at this side of the line. Vilna is right here. At this end of the line. This unit started here. Mm, I can get a concentric on that because I have this guy moved here for one, two, three. So let's take the concentric, uh, but we also then need to move this over here so we don't have an actual hole in the in the line. Now back up here we're gonna put I don't remember where 
these were. I'm going to have to check that. Checking my screenshots on this, I these guys have not in fact moved. See, this guy's going to go, let's see, it's a uh, swamp there, is there? No, it's just a city. So, two. This guy will go up here, I think. We'll go here. This guy will go here. No. He won't. He will go here. And this guy will go here. And the Russians maybe should have pushed down and taken that supply point. Um, uh, what are we doing in supply? Okay, so this is our supply point down here. Everybody should be fine. Yeah, yeah every, that's why I'm marking them. Um, everybody's fine for supply. So that is the totality of the German movement phase. Let's get to combat. The first combat we're going to resolve is the Siege of brest here. We have 10 factors attacking. Correct, correct. We have two factors defending. It is a fortress with a river, so that is a down... Uh, let's make sure there's nothing else in that hex. There isn't. Okay, so that's down two, uh, but it is at five to one. So if we roll a... I hate to... Now, we're, we're, we're doing it. Hold on, though. I'm using the black die. Four. So we're down two. We rolled a two on a five to one. That's one attacker loss, uh, but the defender loses two, uh, which will eliminate Breslatovsk here. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, we can uh, We can lose a step off of one of these guys, and they will advance into that space. Now let's go up here and look at our uh, perspectives on this hex right here. We have four, two, six. Okay, and it's a river and a fortress. So that's down two. We have a, a German active core in the combat. It's a fortress, so concentric attack does not apply. So we're at a net minus one. Let's look at odds. We have, what did we say, 6? So we have 6, 10, 14, 19, if I can pick it up, and 23. 6 to 23 is 3 to 1, down 1. Uh, that is not an awesome attack. I'm going to take it, though. So let's uh, let's roll it up. I feel like, to a certain extent, I'm not being aggressive enough. So that's an adjusted 5 on the 3 to 1. That's 1 attacker loss and 2 defender losses. So unless this is a 2-step unit, which I do not anticipate it is not, that will go to the dead pile. The fortress is also eliminated. We will advance after combat with both of these guys. And we'll have to take a loss here somewhere, which we will do right here. That's where we only lose 1 strength point. Now let's look at Vilna. Looking at, I want to take a quick look at favorable to the attacker. That's very confusing. I am, I am pretty sure that the modifier for active cores is not cumulative, but I'm going to check it right now. Okay, so as I expected, the modifier is not cumulative. It's just, you just get a plus one if there are active cores involved. So we, what did we say? We had a 12 here. Okay, so here we have a six. Here's our 12. And then here's 22. And then here's 32. So we have 32 factors attacking. It is a city in Russia. So it's minus 2. However, we have a plus 1 uh, for uh, German Act, of course. So what did, we, did we say 32? Damn it. Did I forget it already? It's 6, 5, and 5, which is 16, 32. So 32 to 12 is 2 to 1.
two to one down one. That is not an awesome odds attack, to be completely honest about it. Um, I would actually probably be better served by attacking this hex here. So let's look at that. Uh, these guys attacked here, so they actually can't attack. However, that's only one hex, so we can look at that. Uh, that's That would be 11, uh, 16 to 6 would be 2 to 1. 2 to 1 even up. I don't like that. I'm thinking about the 2 to 1 down one on Vilna. Um, you can't really force a defender retreat. Um, the defender may opt to retreat. I think I'm going to hit the end of the line here. Let's see what we have. We have uh, 6 and 4, so we have 10 defending factors. And then we have 6, 6, and 6 is 18. And then we have 6 and 5 is 11. 18 plus 11 is 1929. 10, 2 to 1. Wow. I have not optimized this at all. So we could hold off here and, and be happy with the gains that we've made and go for, and we have made significant gains here uh, and bearing in mind that next turn we'll have Obrost uh, and we can maybe maximize uh, the German uh, advantage but the Russians will have reinforcements next turn too um, and Russian reinfor uh, replacements next turn are four which isn't bad um, German reinforcements, uh, German replacements next turn are four as well actually that's actually way better than I've been getting here um, I'm not really terribly hot on the idea of taking attacks at 2 to 1. So looking at the table, I basically need a 3 to score any defender casualties. And the Russians can afford the casualties more than the Germans can, but maybe not right now. So I'm going to make one attack here. I'm going to attack Vilna, and it's going to be 2 to 1, down 1. And we're we're taking a big chance here. Two to one down one, and we have a three adjusted. That is one defender and one attacker. So we're going to have to take a step somewhere here. We'll take a step off one of these five six fours. Put that back, and we take an attacker step as well. And both are both of these guys one step. Both these guys are one step unit. Um, and it's just one, so they really can't absorb the, the loss by retreating. If it had been two, they could retreat and only take one. Um, I think the Russians are actually okay with that. Um, they actually lost significantly more factors than the Germans did. Um, so that was probably worth my while. Had I rolled a five, I would have killed both units and been able to move in, and that's another victory city. Um, so, I think we have uh, made significant progress here. So, we are calling, and let's check supply, which should be all fine. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, this is actually supply source for the Germans, so let's put a marker down for that. I think these are intended as control markers, but I'm finding them more handy as um, markers for sources of supply. So, we're going to put those there. I think we got one on the bottom here. Let's put that there. Got one on the bottom here. Let's put that there. And I am reasonably happy with, with all of the developments here. So um, that ends the Central Powers attrition phase. The Austro-Hungarians are also hanging on by a thread here. Um, and Warsaw is, a, or Krakow, is about to get its supply cut off. Um, Actually, no, it's a fortress. I'll have to look that up, but it's not gonna it's not gonna have an effect until next turn anyway. So that is the end of uh, turn six. Well, except for the victory check, and we're gonna have to check that. So uh, the, we check Russian victory first, and Russian victory. Uh, the Russians do not control three cities in Germany and they do not control the four that they need in Austria-Hungary. In fact, they only control two. Um, 
and it's not game turn 24. So we need to check the uh, to see if the czar falls this turn. Now the revolution number is 8, and we're going to roll a 1d6 to see if the czar falls, and we're going to add the number of cities controlled by Germany in Russia or Russian Poland. This could end the game right here. So we have Lodz, we have Warsaw, we have Kovno right here, um, and that is it. Correct? Yes, that is it. Yes. So we're going to add a 3 to the die, and if the total is 8, so we if we roll a 5 or a 6 on this die, the Tsar falls, Russia falls into revolution, and the war on the East Front ends. And we rolled a 3, so the war does not end. So that completes turn 6. So thanks for watching. Uh, please stay tuned for turn 7, which is going to represent uh, May 1915 when we start going back to monthly turns again. We've got a bunch of German reinforcements, a couple of Austro-Hungarian uh, reinforcements, believe it or not, um, and some I'm, what I'm sure will be exciting World War I action. So uh, stay tuned. Check that out. Please leave me some comments in the notes below, and uh, subscribe to the channel.